Okay, let me get your attention, please. Uh, we got sketch and analyze. The, sketch and analyze the GERPA of each function. Describe its domain, range, intercepts, asymptotes, and behavior. I think that's supposed to be graph. I'm not sure. Uh, we'll graph it just in case. So we're going to start by graphing the parent function, which is y equals 2 to the x. And uh, 2 to the 0 is 1. 1 is 2. 2 is 4. 3 is 8. So that's about all we can fit by going by 1s. Now when you go backwards uh, or go to the left, we have a, a half, a fourth, an eighth, and then it's leveling off to that asymptote. So that's what an exponential fu uh, function looks like, at least the parent graph. And then we have a negative on the inside and then plus 1. So negative on the inside reflects over the y-axis. So y-axis, reflect, 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 and then everybody up 1. So then up 1, up 1, up 1, up 1. And uh, now that we've gone up 1, that pushes that horizontal asymptote up 1. So like, uh, like before, make sure you show that the asymptote has actually moved up. It's moved off of where it is with the parent graph. Describe its domain. Well, you can raise 2 to anything. So the domain is negative infinity to infinity. The range, however, is 1 to infinity. And we'll use a parentheses instead of a bracket because it will never actually equal 1. Uh, intercepts, we have a y-intercept of 2. Asymptotes, y equals 1 is a horizontal asymptote. Uh, the end behavior, let's look at uh, left and right. We have the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x is equal to 1. So as we go to the right, this thing is leveling off to 1. And then the limit as x approaches negative infinity is shooting up to infinity. So there's your ending behavior. And then as we go left to right, this function is decreasing on its entire domain, which is negative infinity to infinity. So be ready to answer the, these type of questions. Is there something below? Yeah. The population of Nebraska is 1.869 million. I did look that up. That is true. However, I made the rate up. So, uh, and the rate of growth is 0.55% according to Mr. Smith annually. What will the population be in 2040? Now, it says annually, which means uh, that it, this is kind of a compound, uh, not interest, but a compound adding on to the population. So, we're going to use the amount equals the principal or the initial value, which would be 1.869, times 1 plus the rate over n raised to the nt. Now, that's usually compound interest formula, but since this growth is being compounded, it's now a formula for the rate of growth of a population. So the amount is equal to 1.869 times 1 plus 0 0.0055 over 1 to the 1 times... Uh, this would be 26 years. We have 1.869 times, parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.0055 raised to the 26. Or 26 times 1. If you do that multiplication on the test, Make sure you would have something like that if it wasn't 1, of course, if it was 10. So 2.155 million. 2.155 million. Isn't that amazing that we only have, we only have 2 million people in the entire state of Nebraska? I mean, I think New York is 8 million. <laughs> Just New York City is like 8 million. Anyway, I think... Uh, I think Wyoming only has around 500,000, though. I think that's one of the smaller ones, or maybe the smallest. Uh, evaluate. 
Log base 5 of 5 to the 8th, if the base of the log, base of the exponent's the same, those cancel out. What you could do is you know the rule that you can bring the 8 down in front, log base 5 of 5 is 1. So there's another way to look at it, but either way, the answer is 8. You would say this 1 one hundredth, 1 one hundredth, which is 10 to the negative 2. So this evaluates to negative 2. So a couple ways to look at that one. Uh, the log base E is natural log. Exponential function is base E. This is 6. Or you could bring the 6 down, and the natural log of E is 1. That's 3. 5 to the third is 125. Both bases are 5 on this one. Those cancel out also. That's 7. We did an exponential graph. Now how about uh, a log graph? Uh, the trick on this one is usually picking the x's. Let's see, 2 to the 0 is 1. So if x is 1, that's 2 to the 0. If x is 2, that's 2 to the 1st. So this is really, uh, this y is the exponent because logs always evaluate to the exponent. So that's what y equals. y is equal now to the exponent. So 2 squared is 4. 2 to the 3rd is 8. So notice, take that first function we did. We're just flipping the x's and y's. They're inverse functions. All right, so we have the point 1, 0, uh, 2, 1, 4, 2, and 8, 3. But it also, it doesn't, it's not like a square root function. And I have some uh, that when you get to the quiz and the test and you graph it, you just stop it at that point. It actually goes all the way down to negative infinity. It's not a square root function. All right, so... Negative on the outside, that means reflect over the x-axis. So here, down, oops, nope, that's too far down. One too many. One, and then two down here, and then three down here over eight. So reflect over the x-axis. So there is a vertical asymptote right on the y-axis. It has not moved yet, because we only reflect it over the x. And then when we go right one, then that vertical is going to be pushed over one. So it's going to be over here. So we're going to go right 1 and up 2. So right 1 and up 2, right 1 and up 2, right 1 and up 2, right 1 and up 2. Then play connect the dots. Then it goes all the way up to infinity. Now if those asymptotes move, make sure you show me that. Uh, on this, uh, in this section, or this chapter, we expanded these logs. We have natural log of 3 plus 2 natural log of x. Now, that's just the top. Multiplication goes to addition, and you can bring those powers down in front. That's one of the properties we have for logs. And then division is minus. We have 1 half natural log of x minus 2. Remember that radicals, or so square roots, is a power of 1 half. So you can take that square root to a power of 1 half, Bring the one-half down in front. This one's multiplication. We have 3 log base 3 of x minus 2, and then plus log base 3 of x minus 1. And notice that's all the farther you can go. There is no distributive property of logs. You can't distribute that. Cannot do that. So that one's done. All right, uh, with solve that equation, round to the nearest hundredth, um, we can take any log we want. Uh, my, the calculators I have do natural log and common log. Some of the newer calculators do any log. Well, if your calculator does any log, pick any one you want. But I usually pick natural log to do these problems. Uh, so we have 3x minus 1 times the natural log of 4 equals 2 minus x natural log of 3. So we can take the natural log of both sides, or any log you want, and bring the power down in front. Now those variables are no longer in the exponent. That's really good. That's awesome. Uh, but we have to distribute the entire log in order to get the two x's together. So we distribute the entire log and then uh, get all the x's on one side. So we have 3x natural log of 4 plus x natural log of 3 equals 2 
natural log of 3 plus natural log of 4. Factor out the x. That's how you turn two x's into one x. You factor it out. 3 natural log of 4 plus natural log of 3 equals 2 natural log of 3 plus natural log of 4. Thank you. And now divide 2 natural log of 3 plus natural log of 4 over 3 natural log of 4 plus natural log of 3. And then it says round to uh, the nearest hundredth, so two decimal places. So uh, let's try to get this to be the right answer. 2 natural log of 3, close the, close the parentheses, plus natural log of 4, get that value. Then we can divide by, make sure you use lots of parentheses, 3 natural log of 4 plus natural log of 3. Enter. 0.618. Or 0.68, they one hundredths. 0.68. Solve the log equation. Well, the first thing we can do is multiply the two together. We have log base 12 of 12x times x minus 1 equals 2. So we can put them back together. We don't want two separate logs. You can't solve it that way. We need one log. Because now that we have one log, we can write this as an exponential function. We can write 12 squared. Remember, logs always equal the exponent. Equals 12x times x minus 1. Normally, I would distribute that 12 through, but I don't want to distribute and then have to divide it. Why don't we just divide now? That's not always going to happen. If those numbers were different, then I wouldn't be able to do that. Or it wouldn't make any sense. Uh, x squared minus x minus 12 equals 0. x minus 4, x plus 3. x equals 4, or x equals negative 3. Now, there are some equations where it's really not all that necessary to check your answers. But well, like the rational functions, you got to make sure the values uh, don't make the denominator zero. When you square both sides, you got to check your answers because when you square both sides, bad things happen. Bad answers become good answers. And you can't take the log of negative values. So uh, 3, 3 is bad. That would be negative 36. That would be log of negative 4. Negative 3 is bad. 4 is good. You got to check on logs that you're not taking uh, the log of a negative number. Suppose the population of Willington is modeled by the function this, which is a logistic function. Where t is the number of years after 1900. That's not a question, that's just a statement. Uh, what is the maximum population of Willington? It's 18,500. If you're given a logistic equation, the maximum population is right there. What is the population of Willington in 1950? Uh, so we have to plug 50 into T because the equation is for values after 1900. We have 18,500 divided by 1 plus 3 times the natural log of negative 0 0.011 times 50. And so the population in 1950 was 67.74. What was the initial population? In other words, when t was equal to 0. What was the population, in other words, in 1900? Well, e to the 0, when you plug 0 in for t, you get e to the 0. Anything to the 0 is 1. So that denominator is just going to end up being 4. Let's take 18,500 divided by 4, 46.25. When will the population reach 15,000? I'm going to do this up here where I can see the equation. 15,000 is equal to 18,500 over 1 plus 3e e to the negative 0.011t. So we have to set that equal to uh, 15,000. t is somewhat buried, so we're going to have to uh, get it out of there. But notice as we go along, 
uh, we're going to use, I'll write down rounded answers, but you don't have to use rounded answers because we're going to uh, play along with the calculator as well. Now I can switch, I can multiply by the bottom, divide by 15,000. We get 1 plus 3 e to the negative 0.011t equals 18,500 divided by 15,000. So I'll start off with 18,500 divided by 15,000. And I'll write down the rounded answer, but I'm not going to use that one. 1 plus 3e to the negative point zero one one t equals 1.233. It looks like my answers are in the way. I'm going to erase these. All right. Minus 1. And I know that that's just 0.23, but I'll minus 1 on the calculator so I can keep those answers as not rounded and just keep going with them. Uh, divide by 3. So e to the negative 0.011t equals 0 0.078. Now take the natural log of both sides. And that gets uh, that variable out of the exponent. And if you take natural log, it cancels out the e. Natural log of the answer. And then divide by negative 0 0.011. Enter. So 232 years. Wrote down rounded answers, but didn't use a rounded answer till the very end. Rounded to 232 years. Yeah. 